Welcome back to the One and O podcast brought to you by Penn State Student Affairs. I'm Zach Allen. I'm Sam Wallison. And we are back ahead of a very important game this week. Penn State heads to Columbus, Ohio to take on the number three ranked Ohio State Buckeyes. I feel like this game has been on the radar of uh, Penn State fans, the media, you know, the whole season. And now it's finally here. We'll be making the trip. And, you know, we'll. This podcast, we'll just be talking about the game, everything about it. But first of all, Sam, is this the year? It could be the year for Penn State. Um, Ohio State's obviously won the last six matchups against the Nittany Lions, and Penn State's kept them close in all of those six losses. But, you know, in the crunch time in the fourth quarter, they've come up short. But I think the way that this Penn State team is built like, will give them a better chance to win a game like this because Penn State's really won – with their defense and with their running game. The defense is one of the best scoring defenses in the country, and Ohio State's obviously more of a challenge, but I think they have the talent to match up pretty well with them. And in the running game, if they can control the clock, try and keep the Buckeyes' offense off the field, at the very least they can get into the fourth quarter with a close game, and from there they just have to make the plays to win. Yeah, I think outside of the 2017 Penn State team and even 2018, this might be the best chance Penn State has had. I think Ohio State hasn't looked as explosive as, you know, these Ohio State teams have in the past with C.J. Stroud, you know, the Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave receiving core. Um, and like you said, it's been very close. Um, you know, 2017-2018 were decided by one point. Last season, Penn State had a lead in the fourth quarter before giving up four touchdowns. Um, and even James Franklin, you know, he said at uh, media that he thinks it's going to be a one possession game. I think that's what most people expect. And I think Penn State's offense, you know, the whole thing with them has been, again, they haven't th- had the explosive plays. But on the flip side, when you have multiple 10 play drives, we were talking to Curtis Jacobs yesterday. It really helps the defense out. He said not only does it give them a rest, but they have time to, you know, talk about what the offense just did and, you know, adjust. Um, But that will be harder to do against an Ohio State team compared to, you know, UMass or Delaware or pretty much any other opponent Penn State has played. Um, So what what do you think Penn State needs to do specifically to to bring home a win this time? Yeah, I think think it's going to come down to can Penn State – capitalize on its opportunities because we've seen in previous games this season you know Penn State have to settle for three points or miss on a third down conversion like each mistake you make each chance that you miss to score a touchdown is amplified in a game like this because you know you're not going to get as many opportunities as you have in the previous games so I think it's about being efficient staying ahead of the sticks to give yourself manageable third downs and it, it just comes down to execution at the end of the day. Yeah, and Penn State is leading the Big Ten with 44.3 points scored per game. I think Ohio State's somewhere around 36. And on the defensive side of the ball, they only trail Michigan in points allowed per game. They're beating Ohio State in that category as well. Granted, Ohio State did play a ranked Notre Dame team on the road already. They've been tested, um, so that might skew the stats a little bit. Um, but I, I think also, like, we talk about the offense, you know, they have to be more explosive. It might be harder for them. This Penn State defense is going against easily their toughest test. I mean, I mean, I just talked about Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave, but this Ohio State receiving core is no slouch. You know, Marvin Harrison's leading the Big Ten receiving yards, and behind him, they've caged over their tight end, who James Franklin was like, he said, during his press conference this week, he doesn't think he gets enough love. He's top 10 in receiving yards in the Big Ten as a tight end. And then Amika Buka and Julian Fleming were top 10 players nationally coming out of high school. And they're now both wide receivers on top of Marvin Harrison. Um, and, you know, we've seen Kalen King, you know, he hasn't been, really been targeted. Um, do you think... You know, Penn State has what it takes defensively, specifically in the secondary, to slow down that Ohio State offense? Yeah, I, I think Penn State's secondary is one of the best, if not the best, in the nation. So if anyone would stop that passing game, it would be Penn State. But I think 
really it comes down to the defensive line because I think if um, Kyle McCord, Ohio State's quarterback, has time in the pocket, like those receivers will get open, and no cornerback is going to prevent that. So I think it comes down to pressuring McCord to make him get rid of it earlier or take a check down, things like that. Because I think I don't think Penn State can just cover these guys for you know ten seconds in a play. Yeah, and you know I, I kind of I think we saw that when Ohio State played Maryland too. It, Maryland was tied with them, and as the game wore on, Kyle McCord just you know he found Marvin Harrison, and, that, and that's how it started. And the game slowly started to break open. Um, so I agree with you there. The good news is, offensively, Penn State's getting J.B. Nelson back at left guard, though we don't know if he'll necessarily start. He started four of the five games he's played, but, you know, Van Gogh, I, I, I'm going to butcher his name, Ione, mm-hmm. um, he, he played good in his absence, and I think Franklin kind of said, you know, we'll see what happens. We have to evaluate them. Um, but with his presence back, um, especially with Penn State's run game, how do you think that affects the game going forward? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously having JB back would be a big boost for Penn State. Um, I think it's going to be important for them to try and establish a running game because obviously that then makes the play action better. It wears down the defense more. So I think it will be important, but I think like the big matchup I'm looking for is going to be how Penn State's tackles fare against JT Tui Lomonau, something like that. I apologize if I messed it up. Yeah. But um, I think that JT obviously did great um, last year against Penn State. He really took the game over. So I'm really curious to see how the tackles hold up. Yeah, I definitely think that'll be a sick matchup. But you know who doesn't want to get sick? You. And now here's a word from our sponsor. With cold and flu season around the corner, it's important that you take care of yourself. The UHS Pharmacy is your one-stop shop for health and wellness needs here on campus. Our full-service team can have your prescriptions ready for pickup after class. Curbside pickup and delivery to East Halls makes it easy to get what you need to stay healthy. Shop over-the-counter with discounted items or stop to ask our pharmacist questions to get answers. Whatever you need to stay healthy, the UHS Pharmacy has what you need. And I think another sick matchup, again, like we've talked about, will be Marvin Harrison versus Kalen King. Um, but if Penn State doesn't or doesn't win, which, you know, they're underdogs. And as much as people are hyping up that this could be the year Penn State, you know, takes down Ohio State, finally, they're on the road in a stadium that seats 100,000 plus, easily the most hostile environment they've ever been in against the best team they've played this season without a doubt. Um, if they lose with their remaining schedule with Michigan still on there, what do you think that does for their chances of getting in the playoff? Well, I think it pretty much gives them no room for error at that point. Um, and I think it also means Penn State would no longer control its own destiny. Because I would say, obviously, a 12-0 and Penn State team, Big Ten champion team, yeah, they get in the playoffs. I think if you're talking about an 11-1 and Penn State team, like even if they beat Michigan, then it kind of comes down to who are the other teams you know, in the top four in that conversation. So... I think this is a playoff game for all intents and purposes because I think the winner, their chances at the playoff is going to like rock it up. But Penn, but the loser, if it's Penn State, they're going to look at a very low chance to get in the playoffs, I would say, based on all the other good teams around the country. Yeah, and, and like you said, it, they no longer control their own destiny because if Ohio State were to win, they'd probably have to rely on Michigan to beat Ohio State and then Penn State to beat Michigan, who is arguably the best team in the Big Ten. I, In my personal opinion, I, I think they are. Um, even though that game's in Beaver Stadium, you don't want it to really come down to that. And especially, you don't want it to come down to Michigan beating Ohio State. Um, so yeah, I, I think their chances would, you know, plummet a little bit. Um, but I think, you know, a win here basically would secure them one of the top spots unless they lose to Michigan but Michigan's been the number two team that's not a bad loss and neither would Ohio State but I think Ohio State would be a little bit worse of a loss if that makes sense um but yeah we'll 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 see what happens um Sam give me your final score prediction and and your reasoning behind it yeah, I think I'm going to take the Buckeyes in this one. Um, I have them winning 24-20. to 20. 
And I think the bottom line is I just don't trust Penn State's offense at this point. I think their defense is terrific, and it will keep it a close game for sure. But I just I don't think the defense can hold Ohio State's offense the whole time. Like, Penn State's got to make plays offensively. And I just think, you know, I don't think the receivers are nearly good enough, like, to give Drew Aller real great options. And I just think... I think they're just not going to be able to make enough plays to win in the clutch moments like James Franklin thinks that they need to. Yeah, did, did you put a score on that? I, I forgot, yeah, 24 I to 20. 24 to 20. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to disagree with you. I think this is the first time we've been split um, on the podcast here. I'm going Penn State 28-27. I think it's going to be a razor close game. Um, and my reasoning for that is I think Penn State's just fully embraced that they're just going to be a, the team that grinds you grinds you down over the course of you know the 60 minutes um obviously that's going to be way tougher than it has been against any uh, any other team they've played so far um but i think they do have the ability to get it done i think they will you know take a shot deep it just really comes down to whether they convert on that or not um and i think you know penn state's defense is is one of the best in the country, if not the best. And you could say the same about Ohio State, but I think you know this, the secondary um, will really give them the best chance to win. And then obviously their pass rush, you know, will take it from there. Um, but yeah, that's all from us. We'll be hitting the road tomorrow to go to Columbus, Ohio, to bring you guys in person coverage. Um, you can follow along at PSU Foot Blog and read our stuff at psucollegian.com. Peace.